Hello, we are Team 7390 Jellyfish, and we are here to present the intricacies of our autonomous. To begin with, let's start with what path we generally run during our autonomous. In order to make use of our ability to go through the gaps in the barrier, we tend to run the warehouse side, where we place the preload in the correct vision zone, and then we run cycles alongside the barrier. So that's great and all, but how do we make sure that we can actually run cycles? That's where the library Roadrunner comes in. Roadrunner is the backbone of our autonomous, as it has many integrated control systems that allow the robot to move accurately and consistently. For instance, Roadrunner makes use of the pit and feed forward control systems, both of which allow the motors to accurately move to their desired positions. In addition, Roadrunner also makes use of motion profiling, which allows for more accurate velocity control of the motors, which also increases the consistency of our autonomous. Another way we ensure consistency is the usage of a color sensor on the bottom of our robot. We use a color sensor to detect the white line whenever we exit the warehouse, which prevents the robot from drifting too much. Though consistency is important, efficiency is obviously important as well. While we do have a variety of sensors and pathing choices that contribute to our pathing efficiency, the most important part is probably our usage of finite state machines. Finite state machines allow actions to be performed asynchronously. For instance, it allows the cube to be moved into the deposit and the lift to be extended all while we are moving the robot back to the lines hub. This saves a lot of time during our pathing. The final component of our autonomous is the vision. One interesting thing about our vision code is that we check for the tape rather than our own shipping element. This makes it so that we can use other team's shipping elements. 